comes. Don't look at how good I look right now. And understand where I came from, because I ain't always looked like this. I've been through some stuff. That's how I got here in the first place. As a matter of fact, there were folk that dogged me out, that lied on me, scandalized my name, backstabbed me, called themselves being my friends. But that's all right. Thank you very much, haters. Now I'm fine. Why? Thanks to what you've done to me. Do me a favor, tell your neighbor, press on, press on. Press on. He tells them about pressing on. Watch this. In order for you to press on, he uses a remedy. He uses a prescription. He said, watch this, in order for you to press on, in order for you to make it, you gotta do three things. You know what I like about Paul? Paul wrote to the Philippian church. When he wrote to the Philippian church, he told them, he said, you know what? After all that I've been through, I have learned how to press towards the mark. You gotta analyze what he's talking about, the reason why he pressed and the reason why he pushed. He said, because the couple of scriptures before that, he said, because I have not obtained that which I'm supposed to obtain. In other words, the reason why you press on, Pastor, in the first place is because you haven't received yet. God help me today. You haven't got nothing yet. You think that church folk taking care of you now, that don't compare to what God has for you. You think that folk have blessed you now? Then somebody said that there's a blessing in the pressing. Y'all don't hear me, y'all ain't talking to me. He said there, there's a remedy, he told me, he said watch this. Let me tell you how I'm going to obtain in the book of Philippians. He said, I press. And why do you press, Paul? He said, I press towards the mark of the prize. Y'all missing up. Of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. In other words, I'm pressing regardless. I could be broke, but I'm still going to press. I could be stressed out, but I'm still going to press. I could be dogged out, but I'm still going to press. I'm still going to get to the end. He said, I press towards the mark. Let me tell you how. Let me tell you this. He leaves the prescription, and he says the reason why you can press is because you have, God has not, is not through with you yet. He's not finished with you. He said, but in order for you to make it to the end, in order for you to get to where God wants you to do, he said the first thing you need to do is you gotta be steadfast. What does steadfast mean? It means that you got to be in place, in position, and in the right direction. In other words, even though you look back, you can't go back. The problem with a lot of church folk is that a whole lot of us look back at the testimony and still live in the same testimony. They still turn around, oh, I remember when he brought me out. Yeah, you still stuck there. I don't know about you, but when you're in Christ Jesus, there's room for elevation. I ain't got to stay stuck on my testimony. I can look back, but I refuse to get stuck back there. The whole reason why a whole lot of churches ain't growing because folk just stuck. Stuck dead for. He said, watch this, but if you're going to be stuck, be steadfast and stuck. In other words, get into your position and look at the direction in which you ought to go and keep focused. He said, not only look and keep focused, he says, watch this, be unmovable. I believe it was David, he said, he said, like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I shall not. He says unmovable. See, a, a lot of problems with the saints also is, is that every time something new comes on, we fly with the newness. What am I talking about? Let T.D. Jakes come up here and start a church across the street. It'll be a whole lot of newborn, a whole lot of fellowship, new hope, all because something new has come along. And we go running across the street with the newness. But Paul said, I don't care what new comes along. I don't care what the situation is. I'm going to be unmovable. Watch this. I'm going to keep focused. That's how you press on. He said, not only do you be steadfast and unmovable, but watch this. If you really want to be rewarded in Christ Jesus, he said, always abounding in the works of God. 
The reason why some of us are not blessed the way we need to be blessed is because we're doing other business instead of taking care of God's business. Watch this. Preachers in the pulpit doing what they're doing instead of taking care of God's business. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. Y'all ain't talking to me up in here. The reason why churches ain't blessed the way they need to be is because we ain't doing the work of the Lord. We're doing our personal agenda. But Paul said you can't press on by doing your own thing. If you really want a reward from God, you'll take care of God's business and he'll take care of yours. He says, so I press. Press on. And I want to tell you, big brother, pastor, that I don't care what comes your way. I don't care what your circumstance is. You need to press on. Why? Because when you press, you will be blessed. I wish I had somebody praying with me in here. When you press on, you'll discover that God will take care of those who press on. Have I got a witness in here that the Lord will bless those that endure until the end? Watch this. The race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to him that endure to him that presses on until the end. Watch the amazing thing about it is that when you're pressing on to the end, my end may not be your end. And your end may not be my end. But the reality is, is that all of us have an end. And as long as you make it to the end, there's a blessing with your name on it. I wish I had somebody to pray with me in here. I don't know about you, but I don't press on for nothing. I don't know about you, but I don't press on for just anything. But he says here, scripture that your labor is not in vain in the Lord Jesus what is he talking about he said if you preach make sure you preach in season and out of season when you feel like it and when you don't feel like it I wish I had somebody in here that understands what it means to press on in spite of what it looks like why because what it looks like what it's gonna be. What am I saying? My back might be up against the wall. My enemies might be in my face and trouble might be all around. But the Bible says press on in your faith. What am I saying? The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, I press on not based on what I see, but I press on based on what I know God has for me. I may not see it, but I'm gonna press on. I may not have it yet, but I'm gonna press on. I may not have received it yet, but I'm gonna press on. I might get sick, but I'm gonna press on. I might feel down, but I'm gonna press on. Talk about me, but I'm gonna. Lie on me, but I'm 
morning. I don't know what morning might be, but it's coming.